You're listening to sermons from Bethany Baptist Church. For more information, visit us at bethanychicago.org. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. So good to see you, and uh, what a beautiful day to be outside, and so grateful for this opportunity to be with you, and to exalt Jesus Christ, to magnify him for who he is and what he's done. Uh, Just grateful, grateful for this day. Hey, would you uh, pray with me? Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Dear God, thank you so much for who you are, for the ways you made, the doors you've opened. We pray that you move by your spirit. I pray you'll send your word in power and authority. We do love you. We do exalt you. Have your way in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see, all I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness. Is that anybody's testimony today? Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hands hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me, 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 me. Has God been faithful to you? Amen. Faithful in keeping his promise, faithful in being with you, faithful in giving you peace in times of trouble. He's been faithful to me, and I just want to say thank God for another day. Amen? Well, I'm, again, so thankful to be here. Thank God for my friend and classmate, Sister Linda, and uh, all of you, just friends that um, I've cultivated and um, interacted with down through the years. Much, much love. Thrilled to have my son and my granddaughter with me today. And we we'll ask if they could stand so y'all can see who they are. Amen. It's my son, Roy David, and my granddaughter, Naomi. <laughs> and um, any grandparents that are here, you know, we just delight in our, in our grandchildren. They are just the apple of our eye. But I remember when my son was about her age. And Naomi, is she six or five? Six, yeah. Um, So we call him David. David was about that age, maybe just a little bit older. Um, The date was November the 7th, 1991. I'll never forget it. November 7th, 1991. I'm going to go out the house. I'm about to MC a program in a suburb. We're living on the west side of Chicago. But as I leave out, the TV says, special news breaking news magic johnson steps up to the microphone and he announces that he has hiv which leads to aids and we didn't understand what that was we didn't know what that meant we just knew that it was a deadly disease we didn't know how you got it we didn't know if it was airborne if people touched you you would get it people were really really scared and so as he announced that he had it we all were like shocked because magic was everything to everybody. And as I'm watching this, I sat down and my daughter blurts out, I've got AIDS. 
I was like, what? I've got eight. My wife looked at her. I looked at her. David looked at Sandra. And uh, eventually, before I could say anything back to her so she could understand what this meant, David said, no, you don't. She said, yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I said, no, you don't. You don't even play basketball. <laughs> I'll never forget that as long as I live. <laughs> what my daughter really was saying was that she got some A's and she didn't get any B's at school. Totally misunderstood what was going on. Well, this is what I want you to catch. Magic Johnson did retire from basketball, but he didn't retire from life. He went on and he bought some movie theaters, some Starbucks, restaurants. He bought stuff all over and became a multimillionaire. He decided to live instead of dying in the shadow of the opinions of people that no longer wanted to be around him. Of course, Magic is thriving, and that story is, I don't know, what, 30 years old now. He's gone on in life. I don't think any of us are going to stand on that national platform in, front, in uh, front of microphones or behind microphones and say, we have had this cataclysmic difficulty happen in our lives. But as sure as you live, there will be times where you will feel like life is passing you by. You will feel like life is so difficult, so harsh, so deadly, that all you want to do is curl up in some kind of fetal position. But can I say to you today, you need to go on and live. As a matter of fact, look at your neighbor right now. Look at the person near you and say, go on and live. Come on, you got to say it louder than that. Go on and live. You've got you to go on and live. Uh, scripture was read in Spanish and in English just a little while ago, the story of Elijah. Elijah was a great prophet, a great, great man of God. But the people of Israel had decided to go their own way. The culture was anti-God. They had said in their hearts and in their minds and in their activities, we're going to worship the God Baal. And so Elijah stepped up as a man of God and said, there will be no rain until I give my word for there to be rain. Walks away from King Ahab, and sure enough, for three and a half years, it did not rain. This is the fascinating thing. While other people are looking for water and they're dying of thirst and animals are dying of thirst, the Bible says God told the man of God to go to the brook Cherith. And as he's at the brook Cherith, he's drinking water during the morning, afternoon, evening. Some birds would bring him meat to eat. They were ravens. They were considered dirty birds. They were considered unclean. Let me pause there for a second. Have you noticed that God will not only use people that are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Spirit, but he'll use some unlikely people to be a blessing in your life? Come on, somebody. He'll use some people that uh, might be considered winos or drug addicts, etc. Every now and then, he'll use them to speak a word to you, to encourage you, to be a blessing to you. Uh, and maybe sometimes you might think, I'm not good enough, I'm not strong enough, I'm not smart enough to be used of God, but I can tell you, as a person that God has used in some unlikely moments, God can use you. God can bless you and bless through you. Brought flesh to Elijah in the morning and in the evening. Things are going well. Again, all around him, people are struggling. People are dying. People are going through immense changes, but he's blessed. Have you ever been there before where you are experiencing blessings. Other marriages are messed up. Other finances are tore down. Other situations are just dark and dismal, but in your life, the sun is shining. In your life, there's blessings flowing. In your life, there's all you need to succeed. Can I tell you, that's a wonderful season to be in, but every now and then seasons shift, seasons change, and this is what happened. The brook dried up. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. What do you do when your brook dries up? What do you do when your brook dries up? I got four quick things I want to share with, it, with you. Can I do that? Come on, I need you to say amen. amen. Number one, be open. Be open. 
be open to what God wants to do in your life, what he wants to bring to pass. I believe God's still at work. He's still faithful, and he's still got blessings in store for you. And so let me read a couple of quotes for you real quick. Uh huh. If I can get my machine to work the right way. Okay. All right. Here it is. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King said, change does not roll in on the wheels of inevitability, but comes through continuous struggle. It was Robert Kennedy that said, progress is a nice word, but change is its motivator, and change has its enemies. Woodrow Wilson said, if you want to make some enemies, try to change something. Uh, those that know about uh, recovery, they know this prayer by heart. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Here's the, the challenging thing. Most of us don't want change, especially if things are good, when things are decent. Most of us want things to go the way we want them to go. But life is life, and life will life as long as you are living life. And with life comes change, with comes uh, uh, some things going different ways and twists and turns. You got to be open to whatever the next thing is. I remember with my children, and maybe it was the same with yours, they didn't necessarily want to walk. Uh, they wanted me to carry them everywhere, but we made sure they got down on the floor and they needed to crawl and then they, they needed to walk. And they had to develop from getting milk to getting meat. Come on, somebody. Uh, there's growth, there's development, and God has a way of growing you and developing you even when you feel like, I don't want to grow, I don't want to develop, I'm good where I'm at. But what if God has something better for you, but you can't get what's better for you in the place that you're at? He wants to take you someplace different. You have to be open to change. You have to be open to what God wants to do next in your life. And so it was with Elijah. He could have stayed at the brook Cherith, but there was no water flowing. And God had a word for him. And that word was, you need to go someplace different to get what I've got for you. Okay, point number two. First one was be open. Second thing is be obedient. Somebody say be obedient. Be obedient. Everybody say be obedient. Um, I, I know that obedience is a bad word in the, in the minds of some people. They, they think that uh, my way is the best way, and it's my way or it's the highway, and can't nobody tell me nothing. I got to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Can I tell you that you're going to serve somebody? You're going to obey somebody, and I recommend you obey the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God said to Elijah, listen. I want you to get up from the brook Cherith, and I want you to go to Zarephath. It's about 100 miles away. Right now, what we're talking about is location, location, location. I need you to obey me and go someplace different. The Bible says he got up and he went. Ever since Adam and Eve were in the garden and they decided to do what the snake said and took a bite of that fruit, whatever that fruit might have been, disobedience has reigned in our lives. We have decided to go the way that we want to go and do what we want when we want to do it. But has anybody found out the hard way that your way is not always the best way? Anybody? I'm in here by myself. I'm out here by my, Okay, I got three people. All right. Praise the Lord. Uh, God's, God's way really is the best way. And there's an enemy that's not just outside of me, but there's an enemy in me. Have you done it before? Looked in the mirror and said, why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep saying this? Why do I keep thinking this? Why do I keep going these different places? Why am I doing the things that cause me to be tore up from the floor up? Living a life that I don't want to live, I end up not only doing what I want, I'm a slave to what I want. Here's the problem with being a slave to what you want. You can get what you want, but then not want what you got. You gotta obey God. You got to. There's a story about Arabian horses. As they are trained to go across the Arabian desert, the trainers have a whistle, and they'll let the horses go without drinking for days. Eventually, they'll lead them to a place where there's a lot of water. And as they get to that place of a lot of water, 
it looks like the horse is about to jump in, let alone drink. And the, <laughs> the person with the whistle will blow it, the trainer will blow the whistle and say, come back. Don't get water. Don't jump in that water. Don't drink the water. Come back. The horses that turn around and obey, those are the ones that are ready to help their master make it across that desert. The ones that are like, <laughs> forget you. I'm, doing, I'm thirsty. I'm going to obey my thirst. They're not ready. I got to ask you, are you ready? Are you ready to do God's will, God's way? Are you, are, are you ready to serve him, to do all that he would have you to do? This thing called the Christian life, as much as people have preached it to us and said, get saved and you will have a million dollars. Get saved and you'll get new houses, new cars, new whatever, whatever you want. You will have that if you become a Christian. No, this thing is take up your cross and follow Jesus every single day. This thing is not my will, God, but your will be done. This thing is obedience is better than sacrifice. This thing is following the Lord and finding a joy and a peace that's profound as opposed to following your flesh, your will, your mindset, and living in utter disappointment. I, I would say to somebody in this gathering today outside, or maybe those who are listening around, you need to make a decision for Jesus today to do God's will, God's way, to say yes to the cross and say yes to the empty tomb and say, Jesus, I want to serve you. I want to live for you. I want to be all you want me to be. And for some of you, you already know Christ is Savior, but you have one foot in serving Jesus and one foot in serving yourself, and you can't live like that. Let him be Lord of all. Somebody put it like this. Either he's Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. Let him be Lord of all in your life. Okay, so we talked about being open. We talked about being obedient. Let me give you the next one. Uh, be obstinate. Be obstinate. Be obstinate or be stubborn. Do I have any stubborn people here today? Thank you so much. Bless you. You're not alone. There are other people here that are stubborn, but they're too stubborn to put their hands up. <laughs> they're like, I'm not going to do what that preacher says, no matter what. He can't tell me what to do. Elijah gets to the place that's location, Zarephath, Zarephath, Zarephath. Let me tell you a little more about Zarephath. Zarephath is a place where idolatry reigns. The king of Zarephath is the father of Jezebel. So Jezebel brings this idolatry into Israel. It's Jezebel that comes from a land that doesn't look to Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, uh, Jehovah Rapha. She's the one that looks to this God called Baal, the one that is the God of the sky, the God of agriculture, the one that sends rain. And that's why the threat from Elisha, Elijah was so strong. You will not experience rain. I'm sure at first Ahab laughed and said, shut up. Elijah, the God we serve is the God of rain. We just call on him and he'll send all the rain we want. Forget Jehovah God. Forget about him. No, you're not going to forget about him because it's not going to rain. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is above uh, Baal. Our God is above whatever problem you think you're about to impose on this land. Our God is awesome. So it didn't rain. But now God says, I want you to go to the very place where this foolishness is originating from. Isn't it good to know that God can do God's stuff wherever he's at? He doesn't have to just be here at Bethany Baptist Church. He could be in a bar. He could be in a crack house. God can be in the depths of hell and still do God's stuff. Come on, somebody. I want to speak into somebody's life right now. While you're going through what you're going through, maybe just maybe you're saying, even God can't help me where I'm at right now. I'm here to let you know, he's God, he's God, he's God. He's holy, he's holy, he's holy. He's all-powerful, he's all-powerful, he's all-powerful. And our God can do anything with anybody 
at any time. Is that good news, somebody? That is such good news. So Elijah is there. And God says to him, I want you to find a widow woman. A what? A widow woman. And she's going to serve you. Now, most of us not only would have had an issue with obedience, we would have had an issue with maintaining our faith because widows were known for being victimized. Widows were known for not having all that they needed in order to, to live out fulfillment and joy and peace. They were known for people coming to their land and snatching it up and taking it away. They were known for being victimized, abused. If their husbands were gone, hope was gone. Joy was gone. Security was gone. And yet God is saying, go to this heathen land and find this woman in this land. It's like she's the least likely to be a blessing. God, why can't you just send me to a millionaire right here in Israel? God, why don't you send me to, to somebody that's got some musical talent? <laughs> And they're making some, 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 uh, some big hits. I mean, in Whitney Houston around here? And I will always love you. Aren't the temptations around here somewhere? My girl, my girl, my girl, talking about my girl, my girl. Um, God, can't you send me to somebody like that? Can't you send me to a football player? Can't you send me to somebody like Taylor Swift? Uh, God, come on, what are we doing here? You're sending me to this widow woman. You know what Elijah did? He went, he sees this woman, and he says, can you fix me something to eat? And she's like, fix you something to eat? What? I'm getting food for me and my baby, my little boy, and I'm about to go home. We're going to have our last meal. That's it. Right there, his faith could have crumbled. He could have looked up to heaven and said, I told you. I told you. I, I shouldn't have come here. I'm going to die here in the land of heathens. I'm going to die here in the land of Baal. Why would you send me here? He could have said that. Instead, he's stubborn enough to say, before you fix you something to eat, fix me something to eat. And sure enough, when she decided to obey, the Bible says, she never ran out of food. She never ran out of blessing. She never ran out of provision. Isn't that good news? Praise God. I got to ask you, are you using your stubbornness for good or for evil? Are you using your stubbornness to be a blessing or to block a blessing? I never forget when... Um, I had an opportunity to work with Dr. Paul Nyquist at Moody Bible Institute. And he sat down with me and said, hey, I do need a special assistant. I would love for you to be in that position. I said, great. I'm ready to move from where I'm at to where you are. He comes to me a few days later and says, hey, I know I offered you the job, but unfortunately, we don't have the money to do it. And I was disappointed. On one hand, on the other hand, something stood up in me that said, don't give up, be obstinate, have faith. So I, I looked at him and I said, okay, okay. He walked away from me. A few days later, he said, the provost of the school just retired. It looks like we got the money after all. My response was, okay, <laughs> okay. I knew God had called me there. I knew God had something for me. I want to speak to somebody here right now. God has something for you. And it's muy bien. It is so good. It is so powerful. Don't give up. Don't give in. What God has for you is for you. You can rely on that. And, and let's face it. Letting go of God will never, ever be better than holding on to God. Hold to his hand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. 
I said I, I had four things, right? All right, can I give you the last one? Okay, somebody whispered yes, but if I could, if I could hear it a little louder than that. Can I give you the fourth thing, please? Yes, yes, I can. Oh, okay then. Uh, here it is. Not only should you be, the first thing was be what? Be open. What's the second thing? Be obedient. What's the third thing? Be obstinate. The fourth thing is be on call. I don't believe that God has blessed you just so you can hoard the blessing, so that you can just hold on to it and, and not share it with anybody. I believe God has blessed you to be a blessing. Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Have you found that to be true? More blessed to give than to receive. The old hymn says you can't beat God's giving no matter how you try. Elijah was a blessing to the lady, and things were going well until one day her, her, her son died. He got really, really sick, and he died. The woman, you would have thought, would have said, listen, I'm, I'm sad, but I thank God for you and your ministry to us, Elijah. That's not what she said. You'd have thought she would say, hey, can you go upstairs where he's still laying, laying at? He's cold. He's dead. He's gone. But I believe you can raise him up because you've shown me that God can do anything. That's not what she said. What she said was, I wish you had never come here. I knew that my past was going to catch up with me. I, I knew it. And now this has happened. I, I want to leave you with something. Sometimes what people need isn't necessarily natural, it's not food, it's not money, it's not a car, it's not a house. Sometimes what they need is hope. Sometimes what they really, really need is forgiveness. Anybody in here ever been forgiven before? Man, I'm the only one. I see you. Okay, I see you. Let me ask one more time. Has anybody been forgiven before? And there's nothing like that. Elijah goes upstairs to where the boy is at. When he comes back downstairs, the little boy is with him. A miracle has happened. Not just with the boy being alive, but the miracle of this lady looking and seeing that God loved her. God cares about her. God forgives her of whatever her past was. Maybe, just maybe, your past has haunted you. Maybe, just maybe, every time something goes wrong in your life, you think, the only reason this is happening is because God is against me. God doesn't care about me. God is not for me. Can I tell you that's a lie? God is with you. God does care about you. The reality is it rains on the just and on the unjust and I encourage you, I encourage you to know that the God who woke you up this morning is with you and cares deeply about you. Let him have his way in your life. You said Elijah was on call. Yeah, he was on call because it's not enough for you to get a blessing. You got to be a blessing. It's not enough for you to know the will of God. You got to share the will of God. He cares so much for you. I think if ever there were a time for us to be fishers of men, to let a dying world know that God is real, that he cares, that he is present, that time is here. That time is now. I like what Vance Havner said, and I'm wrapping up now. He said, listen, God has not called us to be keepers of the aquarium. He's called us to be fishers of men. I want to encourage you to fish. I want to encourage you to reach out. Let somebody know I love you. I care about you. God loves you. God cares about you. I'm going to give an invitation right now. Maybe you don't know Jesus personally as your Savior, but you want to know him. I want you to meet me right here. Come up to where I'm standing right now. And I want to pray with you because today is a day for your life to be changed. Your life to be changed. Your life to be changed. And here's the reality. 
you've been waiting for your life to be changed. I don't believe that God has sent me all the way from 95th and Cottage Grove to 35th and Hoyne or wherever we're at right now in vain. So if you're here today and you say, I want Jesus as my Savior, will you come? Will you come? And I just want to pray a simple prayer that God will forgive you, God will touch you, and God will do a transformation in your life. We won't belabor it, but if you're here right now, I encourage you. If you're in a house and you can hear me, I want you to uh, throw on something decent and come on over across the street. Amen. Or come on over next door and let him have his way. Let God have his way in your life. Because the change you've been praying for, this message has it for you right now. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? All right. I believe there are people that hear me, and this is the desire of your heart. I want to pray with somebody here today. You love Jesus. You care about Jesus, and you want Jesus to have his way in your life as a believer. And maybe, just maybe, maybe, just maybe, you're going through some changes, some difficulties. I encourage you. I encourage you. Meet me here. You said, man, we're outside. What are we doing? What are you talking about? We're here right now, and God has a purpose and a plan for your life, and it's real, and it's real. I want my brother to come. Will you come? Who You read the scripture? You read scripture? Would you come, please? I'm so glad you've come. Bless you. Muchas gracias. 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 I'm going to ask you to translate for me. Is that okay? They, you speak English. Okay. All right, good. You heard that word. Amen. Okay. Um, there's some people here you're saying, I need prayer because right now it feels like my brook is dried up. And I'm, I'm here to let you know. God knows about it. Next time I come, I'll share. I, I have probably never been more challenged um, than I have recently. I had to have my son drive me here today because my vision has just been so impaired over the last couple of months. Different challenges here, there, and I'm like, God, are you with me? God, are you seeing me? Because I'm not seeing well. And he assures me that I'm not alone, that he's got me. And maybe you're here and you say, man, I feel like my brook is drying up. I want to pray with you today. I'm going to pray with my brothers and my sisters that have come. And there are others. You say, I just need someone to pray with me. I, I, I believe this with all my heart. And then I'm going to pray. There's no more lonely place than the place of believing. Nobody sees you. Nobody cares. I want you to know God sees you. God cares. And you're in a place right now of believers who do love you and who do care about you. But none of us eat gypsy cookies, and we won't know that you're going through a trial if you don't let us know. Come on, somebody. Amen? Amen. So would you, would you let me pray for you today? We won't be dramatic about it. I just want to have a word of prayer for you because I believe there's some people right now that are going through a difficult time. And God wants to do something in your life. Will you just come and meet me here real quickly? I know you're, you're glued to your seat. <laughs> but shake it off and uh, meet, me, meet me here. Is there someone else? There's someone else? Because I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. All right. I'm going to do it like this because I can't belabor the time. My time is gone, isn't it? You say, I need prayer. Will you put your hand up? I do need prayer. All right, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Okay, all right, praise God. Okay, all right, let's pray. Can you all stand with us, please? Stand with us. And Linda, I guess I turn it over to you or someone. Okay. Let's pray. Can you put your hand on top of my hand? Yes. Dear God, thank you for my, my brothers and my sisters. I pray strength and grace over their life. You would uh, work as only you can. And I pray that you do something miraculous on the inside. Give them peace and give them comfort 
Give them to know that you're with them and that they're never alone. I pray not only for them, I pray for those who are under the sound of my voice. They feel like my brook is dried up. I've done all that God has told me to do. I've, I've gone all the places he wanted me to go. Or I haven't been perfect, but I have a deep love for God. God, show yourself strong on their behalf and give them a peace that passes all understanding. We do love you. We do give you praise. And I pray in the name of Jesus that the glory of the Lord would rise among us. Bless these people and bless this place. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody say amen. 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 Will you hug somebody, shake somebody's hand, and let them know I love you and I'm with you? Would you do that? Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening to this week's sermon from Bethany. We invite you to worship together with us on Sundays. For more information, visit BethanyChicago.org.